All right, with all right triangles, you're going to have... Well, first, you need to notice that there's the right angle there. And then the next thing you need to understand is that you're going to have these two sides that make up the right angle. Those two are what we call legs. All right, so that's what makes up your legs. The hypotenuse is always opposite from that right angle. So this right here is the hypotenuse. So if you look at this, sometimes you can just kind of look at the right angle and notice it always points right in the direction of the hypotenuse. Okay? So it will tell you where the hypotenuse is because it points right at it. And besides, like I said before, the other the two sides that make up the right angle are the legs. Okay, so see how this right angle is connected to this to this side and this one? That means that they make up legs. They make up the right angle, so they are legs. So this Pythagorean theorem thing is uh very old, it's very ancient, and uh, the Greeks used it, which is where we get Pythagoras from. It was named after Pythagoras, who didn't really discover it, but he started a movement in favor of it, and so people got together and loved it, and they called it Pythagoras Theorem, Pythagorean Theorem, okay, and that's all this means is that if you take the two legs and square them and then add those two together you'll get the hypotenuse squared as well now that's fine and dandy what's going to happen is you're, you're going to see an example where they're going to say we're going to give you three numbers and you need to figure out if these three numbers make a right triangle so uh, if, they, if they were the lengths of each side, like, uh, I don't know, 3, 4, 5, okay? So if we took these three numbers and said, it, the, will these three numbers make up a right triangle? Well, the first thing you need to do is acknowledge which of these three is the biggest. 5 is the biggest, okay? The biggest number is always the hypotenuse. So what we're going to do is see if this makes a true statement. The hypotenuse squared, then we have the legs squared, or the sum of the legs squared, if you will. And we'll see if this makes up a true statement, all right? So let's see what we get. All right, so 3 squared is 9, plus 4 squared is 16, and these two together make up 25. And that should equal 5 squared, which is actually 25. So these three numbers do make up a right angle. We'd say yes, they make a right triangle, rather. So uh, that's one way that this is going to be presented. The other way you'll see is that they're going to give you a right triangle, and they're going to say, well, what if this side length is 11, and this one is 12? find the length of this side, all right? So, in this one, are we looking for a leg or are we looking for the hypotenuse? Well, as you can see, the right angle's pointing to the hypotenuse. So, that's x is one of the sides that make up the right angle. So, as it turns out, we're looking for leg, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to take that formula. It's a squared plus B squared equals C squared. Very famous formula, the Pythagorean theorem, okay? And if we were to manipulate this, all we're going to do is just replace A and B with the sides that make up, that are the legs, and it doesn't matter which one which is which, all right? So let's say that A was the X leg, so this would be X squared and b can be the 11, so it's plus the 11 squared. And this should equal our hypotenuse squared. So that's uh, 12 squared, okay? Well, x squared, we don't know what x is yet, so it's still x squared, but 11 squared 
is 121, and that will equal 12 squared, which is 144. All right. Now, if we were to use a switch and stay game, we would just take that 121 and subtract it from both sides, or it would switch, depending on which way you want to do it. And notice it goes away to zero there, and you still got your x squared. But now this is going to equal 144 minus 121. All right, so that gives us 23. And then from chapter 1, you'll remember, in order to get rid of that x squared, what we need to do now is simply take the square root of both of these. Okay, so that's going to cancel out the squared and the square root. You're left with x, and of course that's going to equal the square root of 23. Uh, now you may be required to put this into a decimal form, so just take the square root of 23, and that will give you 4.7, Actually, that would round up as well, so let's just say 4.80. Okay, so one of those two is your answer. It just depends on uh, what your teacher wants as far as uh, an answer goes. Some, some teachers want you to stop at the square root of 23. Others are going to want you to put it into decimal form, whether it's rounding to the hundredth or the tenth. Now remember, this is when we are solving for the leg, okay? Now, another way we can look at this, and some of you noticed, right, all we did is we took the hypotenuse and we subtracted the leg that we knew, which in this case was B, and that was the squared. And then in the end, we square rooted all that. So let's look at this uh, a little bit differently, okay? So what we started with was A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So again, if I'm looking for a leg, I need one of these two. Okay, so let's say again that we're looking for A. So I'm going to take B and subtract it from both sides. Now that leaves me with A squared equals the C squared minus B squared. But since I would, would have wanted the length of that, what I would need to do now is take the square root of both sides. And what I'm left with, okay, so this is how you're going to find the length of one of the sides. Take a squared, and then you're going to take the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the leg that you know squared. And that will give you, this is a good way to find the length of one leg. Now they will ask you to find the length of the hypotenuse, and we'll get to that. Um, but for now, this is how you find the leg. Finding the hypotenuse is a little bit easier, okay? When you find the leg, okay, you need to remember this, it's subtraction in, in this square root, okay? So when you find a leg, you subtract. Take the hypotenuse squared and subtract the leg squared. And of course, you are taking the square root of all this stuff. So in this example, they, want us, they do want us to find the hypotenuse, okay, because again, if we were to look, this right angle is pointing directly to the hypotenuse. So let's look at the Pythagorean theorem, all right? We got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so we can see that the hypotenuse is what we need, so that's the one we need to find. And then we're given these two legs. So you've got 9 squared plus 12 squared. Okay, and what does this equal? Now 9 squared is 81 plus 12 squared, which is 144. This equals our hypotenuse squared. So let's add those together. 81 plus 144. All right, and that gives us 225. So the last thing I need to do to find the hypotenuse, just like I did before, is just take the square root of both sides. That leaves me with a regular C. Notice now there is no C squared because the square root cancels it out, okay? And the square root of 225 
15 and we're done okay so yes finding the hypotenuse is pretty easy here. And let's let's look at the formula for this so when we start once again you've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared and again if we're just finding the hypotenuse all I'm going to do is take the square root of both sides okay and what I'm left with is the square root of a squared plus b squared but on the other side here the 2 and the square root cancel out so you just left with the c okay? and that is the hypotenuse now once again you will want to remember since you're finding the hypotenuse on this notice the difference from the example before here is that we're adding if we find a leg then we subtract okay that's the only difference in this if you're finding the hypotenuse you add if you were to find a leg you would subtract here and of course in the front you'd have the hypotenuse and that is the formula for uh, finding the hypotenuse alright so in this example are we finding a leg or are we finding the hypotenuse? Well, you do need to find that right angle, which is pointing to the hypotenuse, okay? So since we're finding a leg, let's go ahead and figure this out. You're finding B. So that should equal the square root. Are we going to subtract or add in here? Well, since it's a leg, we will subtract, and we're squaring both of these. We just plug the numbers in. The hypotenuse is 24. This leg is 8, and this is something you can actually put in your calculator. You'll just put, uh, you'll put the square root, it'll give you a parenthesis, then you put 24 squared minus 8 squared, and then just push equals and see what you get. And of course this will be our answers. It is in meters, and the answer is, so this one I'm going to go on round to the nearest hundredth, and that would give me 22.63 meters. There's my answer. All right, give these three a shot, and then uh, we'll try them as well. See how you do. All right, in this example, once again, we're finding the hypotenuse. So all I'm going to do is find the hypotenuse. So I'm going to take the square root. All right, we are finding the hypotenuse, so we will add the two numbers together. And we can see we have 24, and here is 18. And that would give me, again, I can put that in the calculator, but let's go ahead and just work this one out, all right? So 24 squared. 576 and that'll be added to 18 squared which is 324 if I add these together I get the square root of 900 which will give me 30 now this is labeled so we do need to say that the answer is 30 yards and we're done So let's look at B. All right, with B, this one, are we finding a leg or are we finding the hypotenuse? Well, you can see this side here makes up, is one of the two sides that make up the right angle. So we are finding a leg, so let's go ahead and we'll take the square root. Since we're finding a leg, are we going to add or subtract? We will subtract and we're gonna take the squares of these numbers. We've got an 8, and we've got a 3, and let's just figure those out. So this equals 8 squared is 64 minus 3 squared, which is 9. And that's going to equal the square root of 55, which, as you can see, will be 5.5.
7.42 miles. Again, I'm rounding to the hundredth, but your teacher may require something else. So let's just go and say that this is our answer, and that is B. So again, we're just, so far all we've looked at is are we finding the leg or the hypotenuse, and depending on which one we are trying to find, we'll determine if we either subtract uh, or if we need to add all right, so C, this one, are we finding a leg or uh, the hypotenuse? There go. This side makes up a, one of the sides that make up the right angle. So this is a leg. So we will subtract. We will need to square both of those. And let's go and take the hypotenuse, square it. And we'll take the leg, the other leg that we know, which is 17, and we'll square those, all right? So again, I'm just going to work this, you know what, on this one, let's just go ahead and put it right into the calculator, okay? So the square root of 20 squared minus 17 squared. All right, and that gives us 10.54 centimeters, okay? So that's the length of that leg. Now remember, one thing you'll notice is that the two legs always, 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 always will be shorter than the hypotenuse. And we talked about a little bit about that because when they start asking you if three numbers will make up a right triangle, you'll always make the biggest number the hypotenuse. All right, this converse stuff really isn't too important. It's just this is what it's talking about when it's going to ask you if the three numbers make up a right triangle. The converse of anything, okay, so notice these are conditional statements. You've got an if-then statement, but what happens is the first statement now becomes it was an if, now it's a then, and the then statement now becomes the if. So another way to look at this would be, uh, for example, if, uh, if I like football, then I like rugby. Okay? But we can reverse that. We can say if, if the, the converse of that would be, if I like rugby, then I like football. Okay? So it's just a matter of switching those around. All right? So for example... Another example of this, an original statement, would be, if I like Provo U, then I like to lose. The converse of that would be, if I like to lose, then I like Provo U. See how we switch those? And both of those are true, actually. All right, so this is another example in the book. And if, you, if you're looking at this and just seeing too much words, just give yourself right triangle. It really doesn't matter uh, if the sides are proportional, okay? Now, which of these is the hypotenuse? It has to be the biggest number among the three. So you got 13, 12, and 5. 13 is the biggest one, so that's the hypotenuse. And then you've got a 5 and a 12-inch legs, okay? And so you just, to determine if this is a right triangle, you just take the Pythagorean theorem uh, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and the hypotenuse squared. So our first a is, uh, let's say that's 12 squared, plus the b squared, which is 5, so 5 squared. This should equal hypotenuse squared. And let's see if this is a true statement. All right, so we can see that this is true, so this is a check. Uh, so determine whether the triangle is a right triangle. Yes, it is a right triangle. Uh, sometimes they'll just want you to write right triangle or not right triangle, but uh, we did answer the question. Yes, it will make a right triangle. All right, take a look at these and see if these will make up a right triangle. All right, well, let's take a look at this first one. All right, so we've got these 
uh, three numbers here. So which of these is the hypotenuse? There you get 60 is the hypotenuse because it's the biggest one. All right. So we know the 60 is the hypotenuse. We'll have to square it. And we've got the other two legs. So we've got this 36 squared and plus the 48 squared. And let's see what we get. So 60 squared is 3,600. And 36 squared is 1,296. 48 squared is 2,304. Now we'll just add those together and see if it makes 3,600. Well, yes, it does. It is 3,600, which is what 60 squared is. So this will make up a right triangle. Now, some of you'll notice uh, the biggest number is not at the end. And again, that's why we have to notice this stuff, okay? So let's look at the Pythagorean theorem. So to start off, our hypotenuse is 7. So we got 7 squared, and this should equal the other two legs squared, the sum of them, okay? Uh, so that's yeah, 5 squared. All right, so 4 squared is 16, plus 5 squared, 25. It should equal 7 squared, which is 49, okay? Well, 16 plus 25 is going to give us 41, and does that equal 49? No, it does not. So these are not equal, so we would say, no, this does not make up a right triangle. Now, it did say to justify the answer, and that's just fine because we've justified our answer using our work. Okay, 41 does not equal 49.